I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick. Joining me today is Dr. Cheryl Reynolds, who is an associate professor and director of the Retina Clinic and chief of primary care, the Eye Care Institute Davy at Nova Southeastern University College of Optometry in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Cheryl, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Neil. You authored a fantastic chapter titled How to Interpret a Diabetes-Related Eye Exam Report, published by the American Diabetes Association in their compendium, A Practical Guide to Diabetes-Related Eye Care. What is the single most important thing that you'd like our colleagues to learn from your chapter? Well, my chapter on how to interpret a diabetes-related eye exam report is really important in the communication between the eye care practitioner and the healthcare practitioner. We're part of the diabetes healthcare team. And what's also important, Neil, is that when we talk about, you know, diabetes-related retinal disease and eye disease, that not only is diabetes increasing in prevalence, but so are the complications associated with diabetes when it comes to the eyes. In fact, when we look at diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, and diabetic maculopathy or diabetic macular edema, uh, close to 30%, 28.9% of patients have some stage of diabetic retinopathy, while 13% will have some stage of diabetic maculopathy. And when we look at the, in totality, currently about 8 million people, 7.5, roughly 8 million people have some type of diabetic retinopathy. And those numbers are only expected to increase or double by 2050. So we're seeing a lot more patients with vision-threatening changes in the back of the eyes. So that really underscores the importance of people going for their annual eye exams. Can you lead us through the eye exam report so we know what to expect and understand when the patient comes back from you? So when the patients come in for a comprehensive dilated eye exam, visual acuity or the patient's vision is really important. The other key thing is to uh, underscore whether the patient has blurry vision. Patients with uncontrolled blood sugar may have fluctuated vision. It's also important for us as part of the healthcare team to assess the patient's diabetes status. Are they well controlled? I always note the ABCs of diabetes. It's important for us to ask that and also incorporate it in a diabetes exam report. Then it's important to address the patient's ocular health. You know, patients might have some ocular surface issues, dry eyes, and then of course the dilated retinal evaluation is important to uh, put into the um, report, the results of that, whether the patients have, whether it's cataracts because of diabetes, up to 60% of them will have some stage of cataracts or glaucoma, but also the diabetic retinopathy, the stage, whether they have mild, moderate, or severe, or if they have no retinopathy, it's important to communicate that. And when we talk about mild, moderate, and severe, what stage, for example, do they have hemorrhages? Do they have other changes? We need to put that in the report and that should be included. And then what's important is not only just the stage, but should the patient be referred? Does the patient have proliferative disease? The patient needs to be referred to a retinal specialist. And if they do need to be referred to a retinal specialist, we may have to coordinate care with their healthcare provider to do that. So those are some of the elements that's important to put into the exam report. Of course, a pupil test patients might have pupil anomaly, they may have double vision, and if they do, if they have muscle palsy, uh, that needs to be also added to the exam report. That is so helpful, giving us a guide of what to expect. Briefly, are there any particular uh, imaging tests that you use when you see people? Yes, of course. So retinal photography or retinal photos is very important. Not only does it help to educate the patient, but it also can highlight or show changes in the eyes that may be missed during an eye exam. Another one is a wide field imaging photography that allows us to see changes in the periphery of the retina. And then there are newer imaging devices. We Optical coherence tomography or OCT, OCTA, allows us to detect changes in the eyes that may not be clinically evident such as macular edema, as well as some subclinical hemorrhages that we can lead to earlier detection in patients that have diabetes. So those imaging results also need to be uh, in the exam report that we share with the healthcare practitioners. This is so helpful. Dr. Cheryl Reynolds, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Neil, for having me. And this video is part of a project 
on diabetes-related eye care that is supported by an unrestricted educational grant to the American Diabetes Association from VSP Vision Care and Regeneron. For more detailed information, feel free to download our associated compendium, the link is below, a practical guide to diabetes-related eye care, available at diabetesjournals.org slash compendia. For the American Diabetes Association, I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick.